Hello guys, welcome back. So Thornton here. This is the Daily Grind. This is Saint Seiya Tencent. This is the Chinese version of Saint Seiya The Awakening. Um, and I'm using it today again because some people have been asking uh, what the next character is likely to be and more likely than not it's going to be Libra Doko. So I'm going to uh, talk about him. And also stuff, I'm noticing this wasn't here last night when I logged in. Apparently, finally, there's going to be uh, skins for Hyoga. Uh, there's a special event going on right now for Pandora giving prices. Uh, there has been a restructuring, restructuring <laughs> uh, of the Jammy Championship, which we don't have yet in Awakening, and some scoring mechanics. So it's now easier to read, even more easy to retain your rank in Galaxy Duel. And uh, this is your daily wish. I'm, I'm going to explain very quickly how this works. Um, every day that you log in, you ask for a wish. And after a certain number of wishes, you are certain to get the reward on the lower end. For example, when I'm at 196 uh, wishes uh, wished for, and when I reach 200, I'm going to get a rebirth tom. And at 205, I'm going to get 50 gems. And at 210 days, I'm going to get uh, 30,000 experience points for my characters. Uh, you can uh, you can look for this also in the awakening version. This wasn't on day one. This was implemented later. That's one of the advantages of playing the Awakening version. A lot of the stuff has been already coded in. We are playing the same version as the Chinese with just some stuff dummied out. So I got money today. Money is not an issue for high level accounts. And just let me check what the new store has. Uh, there's some event starting on July 4th and running up to July 8th but it has to do with the gold armor for the bronze saints and some stuff that obviously I don't understand because I don't know Chinese uh, but it looks it looks like it's summer vacation or something and that guy there is yoga and it's probably going to be skins so let's check first my prices for the daily arena i'm doing better here than over there and just uh, i can't stress this enough do your dispatches the higher level your account the better the dispatches are going to be and as your saints uh, gain more levels it's easier to get the ex the extra rewards for these dispatch missions. So just look at all the goodies I have. Later on, B card uh, fragments are kind of pointless, but they still have their uses because you can sacrifice cards to get summoning stars. So there is that. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, Libra Doko, that's the guy featured as my team captain here and I just want to show you real quick just how many summoning stars I have gathered in a week of gameplay after the evil saga banner uh, started I made a hundred fifteen pulls on the last banner so this game is very self-sustainable for free players you can you can pull over a hundred stars every time there is a special banner uh, now in the awakening version they are going uh, ham on the releases because if you notice there is Kiki in the background currently in the Chinese version if, uh, since Wednesday night uh, when when the evil saga banner stopped we haven't had any summoning banner. In the Chinese version, there is a banner week, then there is an off-season 
where you have your chance to build up the character you pulled or the new characters you got, uh, start saving gems to buy the star package here for 1,000 gems, you can buy 11 summoning stars. And there's a lot of stuff that you can buy. Eventually, the Cosmo store is also very redundant. But anyways, Libra Doko, let's go see him. He's more likely than not the next banner that we are going to get in Awakening. And even though he's powerful, um, he's more of a counter-strike character. Like, um, you have to, to let him gather Dragon Souls for a couple of rounds before unleashing his big skill. His physical damage has uh, moderate to high defense has a ton of HP, but not too much. His, his rating for HP is just C, so his growth over time is moderate at best. But he has very high physical attack. And he benefits greatly from building for critical strikes. But here's how it works. Let's go take him to the training hall because in live PvP I just don't measure up anymore. I have been neglecting my account for a couple of weeks now after Awakening launched and I'm really far behind. My characters should be all level 80. Uh, where's the training hall? Yeah, PvP. Let's go to the training hall. So where does Doko shine? Well, you can pretty much slot him any team, doesn't matter if it's high energy or low energy. Um, but he certainly benefits from having Luna or having somebody grant him defense just so he can stand some damage. I'm going to modify this. Um, scroll so I'm going to bring my S characters and I'm going to work with people that are available on the awakening version so none of the characters you don't have like for example you can use this guy and you need somebody else like yeah maybe Athena like this is a good team for Doko because you want him to survive and, and counter strike so how do you go about that okay, let me set the speed well you give energy to Luna and then you give a double turn to move and then you are going to give extra damage to Doko and you are going to protect Doko from death that whenever Doko receives a hit receives some damage now we're going to protect him even more and I don't have energy for a second wall whenever Doko takes a hit uh, he covers himself with the shields and he has a, and when he does that and, w and whenever he attacks with his basic uh, he gathers a dragon soul he can store up to four dragon souls and whenever he strikes with his basic two he also gets a dragon soul so now I have two the goal is to gather five dragon souls so double turn to move striking to Mu and I'm going to protect Mu from death with Athena and there Athena protected uh, Mu from death so now I'm going to protect Mu and I'm going to protect Athena and there you there you have it now I have four souls
and double turn to Mu again and also Doko has a very small chance of supporting any attacking saint The thing is, you have to wait until he has the four souls or his big move won't be as effective. Because you want to unleash the dragons all at once. Two and four, so I can only use one anymore. Uh, it's not a real AOE, he just centers all the attacks in a single opponent and every uh, he unleashes six dragons, uh, six attacks at a percentage of his physical strike. But then for every dragon soul that he has stored, he launches an additional dragon. If the target is killed, the dragons go in order. Uh, it, but it's very fast, so you can actually see that happening. So, for example, if he has four Dragon Souls, he launches ten Dragons in total. So, if the opponent dies during the first two or three Dragons, or on the first one, the rest of the Dragons scatter and attack random enemies. And Doko, when he's properly built, has a superb alpha strike capability so let me go something else let's try another build one without Athena Like, for example, okay, Leo. But this is already too much energy used. So we are going to go with some control. On the field. Like this one. So energy and well I just noticed that Mu doesn't have a lot of energy so I set up well not energy HP this and then we protect Leo because he's very squishy right now for me I don't have him built uh, you saw that was a assist that Doko can do for any teammate it's a very very small chance so now he has four souls four dragon souls and I'm going to kill Xion with this one. And you see that the dragons scatter and attack everybody else. Uh, so I'm going to use just the shield here because the showcase is for Doko. There goes the assist. Um, and he has a chance of different damage because he counter strikes or he assists using the nunchucks or the trident. Remember that Doko has several weapons on him. Now he doesn't have the four uh, Dragon Souls stored. 
but this damage is still decent. And this is how you use him. Uh, you have to build the dragon souls around him and strike when he has many stored. So he can really go with any kind of team, but you have to, if you're going to use him as a striker, uh, but just like with pieces, you have to save energy for him to use. It's not the round one AOE, it's not the round one uh, alpha strike. He needs a couple of rounds to get going. The other use Doko has is just use him to defend, uh, bring attention to him, uh, and he's a preferable target because he, he is very, very high damage to a single target. So he is very very costly. The the dragon flight, the 100 dragon flight, um, uses four energy points. So it's not a character that you can start using right away if you don't bring Kiki. Though he works without the extra energy too. And one final showcase fight. Oh, with Hades, Lord Hades. Okay, I'm gonna use the same team. Now, Hades is much, much faster, and this is a very difficult fight uh, without certain characters. So we kind of have to hope that Ayolos doesn't pick somebody squishy as his first target. So we kind of have to wait. Wait it out a bit. And then, hope for a stun. And now we are going to try to control June. There you go, so now they don't have defense anymore. And I have to hurry because now the eclipse for Hades is going to be complete. And that gives AOE damage for everybody. And yeah, he went for the squishiest one. Ooh, that's a very high level Ayolos must be level 80 and I didn't bring any so this is probably going to be a loss Yeah, those are probably a couple of level 80 characters right there. But it's season one characters versus end game. Uh, I've already shown you that Iolos can be easily controlled. But this is a Doko showcase, not a Iolos counter strike. So one last one, just to keep the video short, but meaty. Oh, 
oh, Radamantis. Yeah, and after Doko launches uh, is released, you can probably expect Xion, who is kind of like Mu, but not really. He has shields, but uh, but he uses life. Ooh, that's a very fast move. Have to keep that in mind. So let's get rid of Kiki. There's the assist from Doko. And let's keep charging that star like extinction. There are four souls and you pick one character to counter strike. And I only got rid of Radamantis because he is a free AoE with no energy. So hopefully that Mu is going to attack again with his AoE. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, I'm going to use my own AoE attack. And yeah, Doku, I mean Mu, because he is way faster than my characters, now he's controlled for two turns thanks to Andromeda Shun and that triggers that triggers Leo passive completely so now I'm gonna get rid of Shura because he's going to be a problem next round Let's keep Mutais. And there you there you go, two assists from Doko. And a counter strike. Now let's hope this is stick. Yeah! For those wondering, uh, if Sean, if Andromeda has somebody tied with Andromeda Chain, then Leo, who is the featured character right now, gets his full proc on the passive. And there you go. There you go, that's how you use Doko. What are you going to equip on him? Uh, I think New Cosmos released when Doko was launched. So just let me cash. If you are strapped for gems, you have to play your training hall. When you finish your whole missions, that's like 50 or 60 extra gems per week that you are going to get. And by the way, uh, this guy, this little dwarf here, that's Libra Doko, as he appears at the beginning of the series, but then later on he uh, rejuvenates himself and becomes his former 18-year-old younger appearance. So what do you gear on, Go on Doko? Well, you need high HP because his HP is not very good, high physical defense and magical defense, so he can actually tank hits, 
and you need Cosmos that increase his physical strike and critical strike. So from from the Cosmos that you get in the Awakening version, you can use this. Uh, you can use maybe Vulcan, but that's only if you're facing characters that you are sure if you have a composition that ensures that you are going to face characters above 70% of health. Or you can use, I particularly like Silver Dragon and Fisher King. And this one, this Fisher King with Drain Health is one of my favorite ones. because it gives Doko some sort of sustain. Oh, resist the status. Now, you see me using s Great Cosmos, that's because at this point in the Chinese game, uh, anything below s Great is garbage. But I'm gonna keep these ones for later. Well, just three more, yeah. I managed to get to Cosmos level 6. This is a good build. Uh, it has drain health, it has resist stats, it has physical defense, though so it is a flat number. Um, somebody asked me once whether what it's better, flat numbers or percentages. It really depends. If your character has very low main stats, flat numbers are better, but you still have to get the percentages up. Uh, for example, this guy is very, very low. He's only about to break 29,000 HP. That's very low for the Chinese version, when endgame is around... Uh, 50,000 HP points and you have to have at least uh, a thousand physical and a thousand magical defense just to be within range. Uh, speed is really depending on your tastes. Doko should be somewhat slow, middle of the pack. Like she, he, he should go be, uh, right after your fastest characters. But in, in physical attack, it can go up to 12,000 points of physical attack. Cosmo attack doesn't matter. Anything goes. Uh, but adding everything from Cosmos and his 8 cents and levels, uh, he should end up between 10 to 12,000. 9,000 um, main stat, if your character is Cosmo attack, uh, 9,000 is on the low end for high level PvP. And physical strike should be 10,000 is low end for end game PvP. Like those are the minimum entries. And HP, 35k, 40k is low. It's really, really low. You should aim to have uh, around 50k. Uh, since we don't have 8 cents yet, and we get many bonuses from 8 cents, the numbers for the current version in Awakening uh, should be around 20,000 HP is low low, very low for endgame PvP, but you should be aiming if you already have a character at level 80 and you are not breaking 25 HP, that's very low HP for a character and your main stat should be around 6,000 points. Like, when Doko gets released, if you bring him, sorry, <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. Uh, if you bring him up to level 80 in the Awakening version, his main stat, his physical strike, should be around 5,000 on the low end and 6,500 points on the high end. 
the rest is going to be eight cents but that's what you should aim for of course you can go really really deep on the cosmos refining and come up with for example these little guys to have six substats of physical attack but that's very very difficult to do can be done but it's very very difficult to do for example this one is also good because it's health percentage and is stat resist uh, but I need more physical strike and I'm still well my my doko was one of my mains and I dropped him because of the energy cost and I started centering on control compositions but he is still viable he's still used in high-end PvP and one way you can check uh, this works also for the awakening version uh, you can come here to the Galaxy Duel Come on hurry up. I want to finish the video already. It's half an hour long already uh, You talk to Camus and you go inside And you can check here on the left side of the screen on the ranking uh, You can check the last fight that the top end the top 50 you can check what they used in their last fight so you can see the compositions of course many of these characters haven't been released in awakening but it will give you an idea of who to expect and as you can see there is kiki there is lizard misty back there athena mu and death mask for the people that don't believe me that Death, Death Mask is a high-gain PvP finisher, well, he is. Because I recently ran into a tier list that some French guys started and it has Death Mask kind of in the middle of the pack and I'm like, no dude, that's not true, uh, Death Mask is... Uh, is a choice for the high gain PvP for the Jamir tournament that it's inter operating system iOS versus Android and it's inter server. The Jamir contest, the Jamir tournament is the best of the best whales duking it out. And when you reach this stage, every character is going to be level 80 and it's going to be 6 stars. It comes down to Cosmos and how you build your team. Now let's just check the second place, his last successful defense. And there's Mu, there's Athena, there's Bergeki, and there's Death Mask and Kiki. And Xion, Xion is also uh, a staple of high gain PvP because he's super high damage, higher single target damage than even Taurus Aldebaran. So there is that. Now, you're seeing a lot of Poseidon here. That doesn't mean that Poseidon is the best character. It's just that he's very cost effective because most of his spells are free. Of energy use and and he's the character Poseidon is the character that has the most skills in the game he has uh, both defensive skills and offensive skills and they work for your team or debuff the enemy team so he's a very very big team player he's only surpassed in utility by Hades but Hades is kind of a one note thing like he you have to start your fight with Hades summoning the, the uh, eternal eclipse and you can you can pretty much have to start with that so your gambits are very limited Poseidon has more variety in the way he attacks 
and of course he has this very big AOE that is just three energy points so that's super cheap for this level of gameplay and as you can see fights go back and forth because there are uh, control strikes um, people defend heal they have equipped uh, cosmos that give you uh, life leech uh, stuff like that uh, for for the guys that follow this channel that know that i started on dc legends and that i have been both a very big defender of DC Legends, but I also criticize it harshly. This is the thing. This is what DC Legends should have aimed for, like eons ago. Like, um, you see B cards in Endgame. That's like if you saw um, uh, Bane used in, in, in gameplay, in Endgame PvP, in the top 100 but without his rework because he started good or he started with utility like Geki has the bear this one this B card he has a single use and that is to stun an enemy you never use anything else that is not stunning an enemy but it's a, almost a 100% chance to stun an enemy after you build him up but there is variety and I'm gonna close the video here because if not I keep talking and talking about the stuff in the game and I don't know if my new audience enjoys that uh, for DC Legends it's kind of necessary to go long because the actual matches last very 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 short time so well this was the Doko showcase it's very very probable that next Wednesday, well, actually on Tuesday, because uh, the server maintenance is on Tuesdays on the Awakening version, so he's probably the character that is going to come out next for Awakening. And I was asked for by one, by one uh, one person, uh, what's his. Uh, HP was and I answer well I don't remember well turns out it's a C class he starts with very very low HP and his growth is very limited uh, because he saw a doko tank uh, a very heavy strike from Mu and just brush it off like it was nothing well that's what you accomplish with Cosmos like Maybe he had, that particular doko had a single defense cosmos built for a flat HP stats in all the super stats and another defensive setup for just physical defense in another one or scatter over several cosmos. Uh, if you build your cosmos this way, the, just so you can picture how many super stats can you equip on a single character? Each cosmos, and starting from B grade, grade of the cosmos has nothing to do with the number of substats that it can unlock. That's just luck. Uh, the cosmos already comes with six substats at random. Uh, but sometimes it's only two, sometimes it's three, four, five, whatever. But this is your end game. This is what the game is about in the end game. It's about farming cosmos, leveling them up to 10, see what six superstats you get and work on those that maximize your character. So for example, right now I have to keep farming for these dragon guys. They are dragons, right? I think they're called the stones in Awakening. Uh, but I have to keep farming for double S grade and leveling them up to 10 and see if they unlock six super stats. And I have to watch for uh, Cosmos of this type that give physical strike, critical strike and defense and some speed. But check how many. There's nine Cosmos 
from the solar, lunar, lunar and stellar uh, categories. At six substats each, that's 21 substats per group plus two base substats. That's eight stats that you can modify per cosmos. So obviously you use the base one and in the case of staunch, the snakes, the critical snakes, I call them, uh, it's just critical strike. But the thing is, uh, that's a very powerful stat to have, so that's why they only give you one. But still, look at this one. It has physical strike, it has life leech, and it has extra HP. This one is just a strike and defense, and they're not even maxed out. What the Cosmos grade limits is the amount of modifier that you can store for each stat. Um, for Leech, I think it maxes out on double S at 3.5%. And Physical Strike maxes out at 3.03%. Life maxes out at 4%. Uh, a speed has a top end of, oh well, for example, this for defense, physical defense maxes out at around 2.5%. So imagine you have a whole cosmos dedicated to physical defense. That's 2.5, 12, 17, 22, 25 percent increase in physical defense just for a single cosmos if you managed to get a whole set of substats for physical defense. So keep that in mind. And that's how Doko works best with high physical attack, high critical chance, and a lot of HP and defense so he can tank the strikes from opponents and gather Dragon Soul. So, well, that. Really, for now, now for reals, I'm going to finish the video here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I have seen many encouraging comments, encouraging comments from the audience here and I thank you all for it because uh, even though uh, this channel is relatively new and it was started for a, a game that has a very very small audience that was DC Legends and this one is more popular uh, but most of the channels are in Chinese they are in Cantonese and I think Hindi and I, uh, I'm sincerely ignorant of what languages they speak in in Vietnam, Singapore, and also Southeast Asia. Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, but for the Europeans that didn't start on, on this version, on the Chinese version, and for the Latin Americans and the uh, Canadians, in some other guys that well it's a double double language barrier uh, from the game itself and from the youtubers i i decided to start making material for saint say awakening i also have a channel in spanish that's basically all knights of the zodiac yeah but I, but i'm very very grateful that you guys have been following me with this new game and even if it were only two people that found something useful in my videos because they tend to be very very long and kind of boring uh, but I I reject to do clickbaity stuff uh, so you won't see any of that in my in, in my channel, you won't see a stuff that, oh, I had an insane luck pulling or stuff like that or pictures of me acting all surprised in, in, the, in the preview picture or stuff like that. I strive to bring useful information to the better 
to my best capabilities. Uh, so with that said, thank you all immensely for your time, for watching, for making this new channel, The Daily Grind, grow through the Knights of the Zodiac. One of my favorite anime series and to this day it's still one of my favorites and my benchmark to know if I'm going to be interested in a in anime or not because it's very very dramatic if you guys want to know some more about the background of the characters I can do that too because the story itself is um, very romantic very idealistic like it's uh, super good guys versus evil evil bad guys but their motives their motivation is what makes the game in uh, the game the story interesting when you actually go and read it i know for many many in the american audience uh, I know Senseiya has many, many uh, United States fans, but for the most part, they're just going to be interested in this game because it's a new thing, it's, uh, it's, well, it's very, very accessible for new players, uh, but I have seen many people approaching this game like, like it was your standard anime gacha game where you only have to have the best units and, the, and you have to reroll to have the best unit in the game. Oh, my cats are going crazy. Well, I'm going to finish the video right now. Thank you guys. Thank you immensely for your time. I really hope that you find my channel entertaining and useful. See you again the next time. And remember, in the meantime, keep grinding on.